Are you surprised that most people aren't thinking more about this or talking more about this? Um, I think there was a movie on Netflix like a year and a half ago, I think it was called Don't Look Up. And um, it starts off and there's like this meteor coming toward the earth and everyone's freaked out. <laughs> and then like a couple days later, everyone's like not thinking about it anymore and they go back to like arguing with each other and going back to their own agendas. And then it ends up hitting the earth and everyone's like, what just happened? Um, I don't know if you saw that film, but are, are you surprised by the fact that the public doesn't need to be talking about this enough? Politicians aren't talking about this as well? The movie is excellent. It's mad accurate. Like all of us in the safety community just went, oh my God, this is perfect. Uh, I think it has something to do with this human bias of ignoring our own demise. We are all dying. I'm dying, you are dying, our kids are dying, but we don't do anything about it. We don't have 99% of our country's budget going to research to stop it. We just kind of accepted it as that's the thing and we do our silly things with our time. Even if you're older, even if you're 90, you're still not giving 100% of your wealth to aging research. You're like ignoring that fact. So I think we're doing the same thing at the level of humanity with this technology. Hmm. So part of us, is that a death wish? <laughs> I think it's a protection mechanism. If you always thought about your demise, you would be very depressed and non-functional as an entity. So I think kind of built-in protection has evolved to make you be able to function even though this is the situation you're in. Let me ask you a question, doctor. You, you're at a university. I, I'm guessing you have um, exposure to undergrads or at least grad students. What are the, the kids saying about this? What are the questions they're asking? Do they understand it? Are they worried about it as well? Uh, what are the kind of conversations you, you seem to have with, with the, the, the people there? They seem to be very interested. That's probably the most uh, entertaining lecture for them, right? Everything else is kind of search algorithms and uh, data optimization, things of that nature. So they're definitely interested. They want to understand the future, how it's going to impact their lives, things like career choice. Does it make sense to spend four years learning to be a programmer if uh, AI can do programming better? Does it? Well, we're starting to see those uh, co-pilot type systems and uh, the latest uh, Claude, uh, I think Sonata 3.5, is a very capable programmer. It's not better than the best humans, but it's better than most of my undergraduates in many ways. I mean, that's, that's wild. I mean, if you were 19 again, knowing everything you know now, would you get a degree in computer science? So it depends on your timelines, right? If you think you have two years left, a 12 year degree doesn't seem like a great deal, but uh, it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, sometimes education is important to improve yourself, not just to have a diploma to get a job. And so the, the students are curious about it, but they're also confused a little bit as far as the right choices and, and some of the careers and things like that. Of course, a lot of majors which still exist uh, don't have any future behind them, right? If you, I don't know, an accountant or something like that, I suspect your job will not be there for a long time. Maybe some elite, ultra wealthy individuals will still hire a human accountant, but for most of us, software handling my taxes, handling my accounting is much better, cheaper, more accurate. Wow, what a strange time for, for, uh, for education. Um, I know you've said that we won't know how the intelligence will potentially exterminate us or bring some of these scenarios, but what, what do you think will be some of the more interesting events over the next two years? Have you thought about it? You know, I, for me, I, I've thought, well, that there's going to be some catastrophe, a loss of human life that maybe can be chalked up to this intelligence. Maybe there'll be a massive set of job losses, like all the Uber drivers are out of business, that'll spike interest. Maybe there'll be this or that. Have you thought about some of those things that, that could be coming up that we should um, expect or that might give a little bit more attention to this? So I have a paper in which I argue against purposeful accidents. Some people said, you know, some accidents somewhere with AI would teach humanity about the dangers and we will be better prepared for, for what's coming. I think it's a terrible idea. I think we don't learn from AI failures. I have a paper collecting AI accidents over decades. 
they made no difference. Uh, Microsoft is a great example. They had this uh, tape button, uh, Twitter, which became highly abusive, uh, embarrassment to the company. They shut it down, but that didn't teach them not to introduce a uh, more advanced version of OpenAI's bot later on. And that seems to be the process. I think what happens is it's sort of like a vaccine against this bigger problem. We learned that AI accidents are normal and it's not a big deal. We're still here. So, okay, maybe a couple people lost their life, but, you know, more people died to smoking. So we, we can go on. It's not a problem. Okay. So you don't see them as teaching us a lesson. Whereas that, that would have been, that would have worked with other technologies, but because it's our, it's super intelligence, those things won't actually change the course. So we need a lot more research on scale of those things. Everything we've seen so far had absolutely no impact in terms of changing direction, slowing down this technology. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast. It's going to be bloody. It's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. I'm looking for partners collaborators, colleagues who want to join forces with me around the globe and create real value, generational wealth, and financial freedom for everyone else around the world. Get involved in the cryptocurrency markets. Get involved in the NFT markets. This is your moment. Life all comes down to a few moments. Don't let this pass. Now it's not too late. Next year is going to be too late. Ultimately, this is about freedom. That's the way I see it. This is about giving power back to the people and enabling billions of people worldwide to use the financial markets to improve their lives and those of their friends and their families and their communities. Honestly, I think it's a violation of human rights not to allow people basic access to financial services. Because right now people are being kept in the dark, they're being robbed of education, and it's a travesty. And so I'm looking for people that wanna join me and be a part of this solution. And that all happens inside the DeFi Academy. The gains my students are making are absolutely amazing. Double, triple digit gains in the first month alone. That's amazing. This will change your life. Now is the time to get involved. I'm going to tell you exactly how my students in my academy made money in the last 30 days. I'm talking about real trading results. And let me just whet your appetite a little bit. Let me hit you with some numbers. I'm talking Brendan from New Zealand is up 68.77% on the month. Steve from Europe up 83%. Albert in Singapore up 169.9% on one single trade. I got Susan up 153% on her call options alone. Also rocking 139% returns and 442% returns as well on individual trades. These are people that are changing their financial future in the last 30 days but it's based on trading discipline. I've graduated over 500 students from inside my academy from over 54 countries around the world. It's amazing. When it comes to crypto, DeFi, and blockchain, we love this space. We truly believe it's the future. This is down to our core. It's authentic to what we're doing, and everybody can tell through the camera because you can't make this stuff up. If you're watching me now, wherever you are, I implore you, take 60 seconds right now and join my academy. Apply today. Now you've got a chance. Life all comes down to a few moments. What are you going to do? What's the choice that you're going to make?